Hi, everybody. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm here with uh, one of my favorite guests, uh, criminal defense attorney, Andrea Burkhart. And she's come on this show before to talk about a range of topics. I wanted to start by talking about the Marilyn Manson situation. Now, this is something, Andrea, you don't have, I know, a lot of expertise in, right? Have you followed it much at all? Uh, I'm just just around the periphery. I haven't followed it nearly as closely as uh, I have the the things that have actual, you know, formal court proceedings going on. Right, right. And so, you know, and I understand that. And it's fine if there are a number of things maybe you don't have any comments about. Um, but I, there's the stuff that's in the news. And I guess I wanted to get a lawyer's opinion as to what this means. Um, so there, just recently, it was being reported everywhere that uh, the LAPD or the LASD, uh, they had, quote, raided, that's how it was described, uh, raided Marilyn Manson's house uh, and had a search warrant and were searching things pertaining to allegations from, uh, from years ago. Uh, from an attorney's perspective, you know, I, I obviously I have my my own opinion about the the Marilyn Manson case. Uh, I've talked about it numerous videos on my show. I think that uh, I think that he is innocent. I definitely think there's been a rush to judgment. Um, I have a lot of problems with these accusers and their allegations and inconsistencies and and, and so forth. Um, and I, I know that you can't speak to that, but just in general, um, the way that this is being depicted as a kind of a raid, uh, what's what's going on here? As an attorney, if Marilyn Manson were your client, kind of what is your feeling about this step that the the LA uh, the LA Sheriff's Office has taken? Well, so the LA Sheriff's Office uh, apparently got a search warrant, and we don't know the details of um, what the basis was for the warrant or exactly what it was that they were looking for. Um, the article that I saw from Rolling Stone just indicates that they were uh, looking for possessions of his and that they seized some, uh, I believe, data storage material, so probably hard drives, um, computers, things like that. The thing that stands out to me about this warrant uh, is the, as, as you pointed out, the age of the allegations. So one of the uh, limitations on the information that can be used to justify a search warrant is that it cannot be stale. The information has to be recent enough that there's a reasonable inference that its condition won't have changed, it'll still be in the same, same location as, as it was, um, and so forth. And so in this particular case, the fact that the allegations are arising from 10 to 12 years ago is extremely stale. I mean, I've seen situations where, for example, a, a police officer, say a police officer pulls over a driver, runs his license, discovers his license is suspended. The police officer then encounters that same person out driving on the road a week later, and based on that prior information, goes ahead and, and does a stop, arrests the person, searches the vehicle, you know, what, whatever. Um, and, and in that circumstance, a week has been considered too stale for that type of information. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, a 10 to 12 year um delay is just facially going to be problematic. Uh, of course, the attorney is going to challenge that, you know, should, should it get to that point. Um, without seeing the, the, the warrant or the affidavit, you know, there may very well be other grounds. Um, some typical challenges are that, number one, the warrant, the affidavit doesn't establish probable cause to believe um, that there's crime. It doesn't describe the evidence that is being looked for um, with sufficient particularity, um, that the warrant is overbroad. So these are all the types of things that um, Marilyn Manson's attorneys are going to be looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Now, does it, is it, is it extremely unusual to have a situation where the crimes in question, the alleged crimes would have occurred years ago? Um, like you said, basically like a, you know, a decade ago and that you would have, that, that you would have a search warrant being served. Like what, what is that? I guess what I'm asking is, does that indicate something about the type of evidence they're looking for or are the, it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to say, you know, it's, it's again, it's one of those, it depends, you know, it's not uncommon at all for, say, 
Um, say there's a, a cold case rape file from, you know, 20 years ago and uh, new evidence uh, or information comes forward. And so they would request DNA, for example, that would be perfectly normal and acceptable because a person's DNA doesn't change over time. You know, you're going to get a, resist a consistent result regardless of that time frame. In this particular case, you know, if they're looking for um, digital information, I mean, I don't even remember, you know, what the technological situation was 10 to 12 years ago, you know, we were just fairly new into iPhone territory at that point, you know, and so it, it, it's, the, it's the type of evidence that um, you would expect that a person has the contents of their hard drive have changed substantially, you know, since since uh, since the time of these allegations. Um, so that it, it just definitely raises a big red flag for me. Uh, it raises a big red flag in the sense that um, it to me it, it makes the uh, that the LASD look less credible, or it makes the, the the case or the warrant look less credible, or what do you mean? Uh, from my perspective, it, it makes the warrant look very questionable. Ah, okay, okay. Is it, is it possible that uh, that a police department, especially in in LA, uh, would be uh, could could feel political pressure? Uh, like you know, because one of the things that Evan Rachel Wood and some of the others did is, is they went on Instagram and they have been really like like beating the drums, uh, begging people to call and complain. You know, call the LA. PD and, and complain about the situation and call the representatives and stuff. And um, is that beyond the pale to think that perhaps uh, this is politically motivated, that they, they feel that they have to put on a, a kind of a, a good show at least? Well, look, we raided his house and this and that. Or, or is that is that sort of too conspiratorial of me <laughs> to think that? I mean, I don't think you could rule anything out. Uh, the, the LAPD, you know, hardly has a long storied history of, of integrity uh, <laughs> and so forth. Uh, go ahead and Google the crash rampart scandal if you're interested in more details on that history. The thing that I think, um, you know, cuts against that a, a little bit is the fact that um, they can be sued for violating a person's civil rights. Um, there's a federal statute, um, it's called Section 1983, that is um, basically establishes a private cause of action uh, for, yeah, for, for, for violating a, a person's constitutional rights and, and damages that, that they incur as a result of that. So you would expect with somebody that's high profile and presumably has the resources that Marilyn Manson does, um, that they would be more Careful. cautious than ordinary to make sure that they are dotting all the I's and, and crossing all the T's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. I, now, let's just say, and again, this is, this is my opinion. This is not yours. Uh, you've not I don't know what your opinion is on the Marilyn Manson case. Do you even want to say, do you have an, do you have an opinion as to. I, I don't, I don't really have an opinion. My, my general approach to any accusation is always skepticism. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at, I'm looking at pretty much everything as, as being possible. Um, so at this point, from my perspective, Marilyn Manson is presumed innocent and uh, he's entitled to that presumption until a jury decides he's guilty. Yeah, and and we definitely agree on that. And you know, that's one of the things that uh, that I, I've tried to be to consistently talk about in my shows. Uh, when people when people ask when people say, "Well, how do you know? You know, are you a hundred percent sure that Marilyn Manson is innocent?" And to me, it's 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 not it's it's not about that. I do I do my opinion is that he's innocent. Um, but to me, the real issue here is is presumption of innocence and the fact that I, even if you have a group of of women who accuse someone of something, I'm sorry, but you need actual evidence, and we've not been given any, and you need skepticism, especially in these media cases, right? So anyway, but this is what I wanted to ask you then. Um, you know. I, Let's just just pretending or assuming that you were that you were on Marilyn Manson's side. Let's say that you were one of Marilyn Manson's attorneys. Um, how are you feeling at this point about the situation? Uh, he's had, you know, he's no charges have been brought against him anywhere. Um, he is apparently. I thought that they were not investigating him uh, anymore, but he is apparently being investigated by um, the LA Sheriff's Department. Um, 
you know, how are you feeling about things if you're his lawyer based on this? And is there anything you would be advising in particular? From my perspective, uh, the execution of a search warrant is a massive, massive es escalation in the investigation. Um, it's it's not typically something that you're going to do unless um, you are, you know, legitimately and, and seriously pursuing a, a potential criminal charge. So if nothing else, it would be a signal to me to... Um, be very cautious now, you know, in any in any dealings with the LAPD, certainly, um, and probably with with any type of public comment as well. Um, I, I would take it as uh, an indication that what the LAPD, LAPD is attempting to do at this time is to um, provide some type of corroboration to the accusations that have been made. Mm -hmm. um, that corroboration may be strong. It may be weak. Um, so, I mean, I just, I, I can imagine things like if he's got, you know, say he's got, uh, he's, he's got one of these smart home systems, you know, so they can check the historic records of the temperature that he kept the home, you know, and they, they may potentially treat that as corroboration of, of these very uh, serious uh, accusations. Oh no. <laughs> It's true, everyone. It's true. He did keep the thermostat at sixty-five. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> uh, um, okay. And again, I feel like I'm kind of like a lawyer. I'm kind of asking you the same question in different ways. But, but, uh, so uh, what I'd like to ask is, and and this is obviously, I admit, it's obviously a leading a leading question because I am coming from the perspective of believing he's innocent. But, um let's just say he, let's say for the sake of argument, he was innocent. Is it, is it conceivable that the LAPD or, or I keep saying LAPD, LA Sheriff's office could be going through this investigation simply because they have nothing other than, than accusations. And they want to, they want to put a good, and I don't mean this in a nefarious way in a conspiratorial way, but they're wanting to, to give the impression that they're taking victims, supposed victim statements seriously. And so I guess, I guess my question is this, is it possible, would it be possible that there really is no evidence corroborating the victims, uh, the, uh, the accuser's stories, and the LAPD would, would go through this and would serve these search warrants and would do an investigation simply because they have accusations? I mean, that's, is that possible? Or do you think that this search warrant shows that they have some other kind of evidence? Well, frankly, they should do an investigation on the basis of accusations. I mean, that's right. literally their purpose. Right, um, right. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to fault them for no. investigating and, and trying to test, you know, the, the veracity of these very serious accusations that have been made. That's I right. think that where it just gets difficult at this point is trying to evaluate the, the strength of, of their case and, and to some extent, the good faith of, of their investigation. I, I just don't think we, we really have enough information to, to be able to gauge that. Um, like I said, it's, it's very high risk for them to, you know, pursue a, a weak search warrant, a marginal search warrant in a case like this with, a, with a, a, an, an accused like this. Um, so I, I do have to assume that they had, you know, they, they had some basis. Um, you know, I think that, uh, I think that it's very understandable that if they, if they have allegations from multiple women, right. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't deny the fact that there are multiple women that have accused Marilyn Manson of, uh, of crimes and so forth. And if they have multiple women accusing him, then it's like you said, it's very understandable. They, they should be investigating it. Right. And I agree with you there. Um, I'm not suggesting something, uh, I'm really not suggesting something, like I said, that's uh, unethical or improper on the part of the LA, uh, the LASD. And, and I guess more of what I'm trying to point out, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but trying to point out is that um, the fact that they're investigating does not necessarily mean that they have uh, additional corroborating evidence. They would be, they would be possibly investigating just uh, on nothing else, but just the victims, the, the accusers statements, and perhaps some of the political pressure that we all feel in this environment to take victims and accusers statements seriously. You see what I'm saying? 
Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that, that something that comes up that people often have misconceptions about is that an accusation is evidence and an accusation in and of itself can be probable cause to believe that, that a crime has been committed. So mm. yeah, it's entirely possible that this, in, this, this entire search warrant is based solely on the accusations and no other type of, of corroborating evidence. And that that's what the search warrant exercise is geared towards is, is finding that corroboration or absence of it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Andrea, and for speaking to me about that. Because like I said, I've gotten a lot of requests from a number of people um, on Instagram and YouTube to talk to an attorney about uh, the Manson situation and about this latest development with the search warrant and the, and the, the raid, as it were. Uh, thank you so much to my audience. And I, I really appreciate your support. And as always, uh, your donations, uh, any little bit helps. And it does take time and effort and uh, some money to put these things together, these interviews and these, um, uh, these segments for you. So I appreciate your support. And I will see all of you later. Bye-bye.